Today I want to talk about the Catholic Church. I want to talk about their beliefs. I want to talk a little bit about their history. And I want to see what the Bible says about this. And what I'll do is I'll get started right now. We'll talk about their beliefs. I have them written down, some of those. Now these are just a few things that the Catholics believe that really just stays within the Catholic Church. Now there's many other things that I didn't put down. This is just a basic idea of starting it. Now I got all my information from a, a different Catholic um, resources. I actually get right to the Catholic official websites and things. I went to Catholic City. I went to Catholic Online and Catholic.com websites. And also I have two friends that are actually active Catholics. And they actually uh, answered some questions for me. Strangely enough, both go to two different Catholic churches. They're, you know, and they're active, they're active in it. But they, some of the things they had to say were actually kind of different from each other. The definitions were different, which was kind of strange. I have ran into that few things in the Catholic religion. Um, I do have a Catholic Bible, a study Bible I use for, for you know, studying purposes uh, to, to actually to do this video. And they actually have a different way uh, of the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments are, cor are correct in the study Bible I have. But if you look up the Ten Commandments through the Catholics... They actually take out uh, the second commandment, which would, is you shouldn't create a, gra a gra graven image and worship it. They took that out and actually made the, la make, uh, the number nine, the ninth um, commandment, and turns into the two commandments. So there's a lot of differences with the Catholics, it looks like. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to come back to the Peter Pope thing because I have a, kind of a little bit to say about that. Now, they believe that Mary is a perpetual virgin. Of course, a perpetual virgin doesn't mean that she was a virgin when she, had, she gave birth to Jesus. She was, in fact, a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus, as the Bible says. A perpetual virgin means that after she gave birth to Jesus, she continued to be a virgin for the rest of her life. She was always a virgin, meaning perpetual. Now, let's have, have a look at it. Let's see what, we, what the Bible says about, about it. Let's look at Matthew 13. Uh, 13, 15, uh, and actually 55, let me see, 13, 55 through 56, there we'll do that, 13, 55 through 56, look it up here real quick, there we are, almost, yeah, Matthew 13, 55 through 56, it says, and, and uh, someone speaking, is, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James? Uh, I can't pronounce the second one, J-O-S-E, uh, J-O-S-E-S, -E I couldn't pronounce it. And Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these the images? And it's saying right here, Mary has a bunch of children. This is after Jesus was her firstborn. She was a virgin when Jesus was born. Of course, Mary would, was married to Joseph. And um, what it was, was Mary had children with Joseph. We count one, two, three, four, at least six, because it said sisters, a minimum of two. That's at least six children. So it's impossible for Mary to be a virgin her entire life. Let's see here. Let's look in, uh, let's look in Galatians chapter 1, uh, verse 19. Let's see what else we got here. I'm not too far. I'm not. Here we go. Galatians chapter 1, verse 19 says, But others of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Of course, we see James in here, and James was also mentioned here being one of Mary's sons, which then would be Jesus' brother. Because Mary gave birth to Jesus, Mary gave birth to James. So again, we see Mary had children after Jesus, so she couldn't be a virgin, she was married to Joseph, she had children. Okay, so there's that. So Mary can never be a perpetual virgin according to the Bible. All right, let's move on down here. Let's look at the rosary. They pray the rosary. 
what's the Bible say about praying a rosary? Now, rosary is something you pray over and over again. Kind of interesting. Let's look at let's look at Matthew six seven. Let's see. Here we go. Matthew six seven says, "But when you pray, use not vain repetition." As the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard from their much speaking. Well, of course, in the six seven Matthew it says, "But when you when you pray, use not vain repetition. Don't say the same thing over and over again." It's probably not a good thing to be having a rosary. Okay, let's move down to purgatory. Is purgatory biblical? Let's see. Let's go to. Uh, Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 in verse 8. Let's check that out. See what it says about purgatory. 2 Corinthians. All right, 5, 8. 5, oh, eight, said, five 8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It's saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, if you're absent with your body, if you're dead, because you're absent from the body, if you're dead, if you're dead, then you're present with the Lord. Well, the purgatory doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. So there's no purgatory to me, because that's what the Bible says. If you're, you're present with the Lord, if you're dead, if you're, you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord, you're dead, so you're with the Lord. Now, if you're a non-believer, you're going to go straight to hell, you know. And I believe that's what Catholics even believe of bad people, you know, unsaved people are going to go to hell. Okay. Lose your salvation. I'm going to get right to that, and I had to do this in many videos, but I'm going to get right to that. Let me first go to the Queen of Heaven first. Let me jump over my notes here. Okay. It says Queen of Heaven. Let's move over to, go back to the uh, Old Testament here. Let's go to Jeremiah. Oops. Too far on my J. There we go. Let's go to Jeremiah. And we'll go to chapter 7. And we're going to do verses 18 through 20. Now, a lot of the Catholics, a few Catholics told me, and I've actually found online, but uh, Mary was called the Queen of Heaven and the Queen of Earth and things like that. Interestingly enough, the name Queen of Heaven is actually in the Bible. In Jeremiah chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 18 through 20. Let's see. Okay, here it goes. The children gather wood, and the men kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto, their, unto other gods, that they may rebuke, re, excuse me, they may rebuke me to anger. God's speaking here. Do they rebuke me to anger with question mark? Saith the Lord, do they not rebuke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore unto us, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon men, and upon, upon beasts, upon the trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. Okay, burn, we're talking fire here and shall not be quenched. That sounds like hell to me. And it actually, I'm just not reading it in, in changing words. Catholics actually believe that Mary is the queen of heaven. Right here, where my finger is, in the Bible, in the King James Version of the Bible, it says queen of heaven, in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 18 through 20. Queen of heaven. And you go scrolling down here, and you finish, and it says, and God is uh, angry, and it shall burn. Let's see right here. And, and, and therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon men, and upon beasts, and upon trees of the field, and upon the fruits of the ground. And it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. What's burn, and shall not be quenched? Hell. The only time people are going to come out of hell is when they actually go to the judgment before Jesus Christ on his throne at the great white throne of judgment to get their punishment for their sins. People that, go to the, people that are judged for their sins 
are those that reject Jesus Christ. They reject him. And there's people here, as it says in Jeremiah, they're worshiping the queen of heaven and they're worshiping other, worshiping other gods. So we shouldn't be worshiping the queen of heaven at all. And people say, well, we don't worship Mary. Well, it's interesting because I have yet to hear a Catholic say that you, can, that you can't get to heaven without Mary. They're all like, you have to have Mary to get to heaven and Jesus. No. Mary's not included here, you know, with this. So we've got to be careful. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to lose your salvation. So many different church denominations get this wrong. And they're getting it wrong from the ever popular verse in Matthew, in chapter 24, verse 13. Let's have a look at Matthew 24, 13. Okay, almost there. And here we are. Matthew 24, uh, 13. It says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. Interesting. It says right there, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. What does that mean? Does that mean you can lose your salvation? No, it doesn't. In order to understand this verse and to understand the Bible as a whole, we have to understand one huge thing. We have to understand this. We have to understand what was said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. An amazing, important verse to understand the Bible. Let's go there, shall we? Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Lord tells us all to study to show thyself approved unto God. Study your Bibles and understand how many people are out there saying, Oh, you can be saved. And they'll talk about, you know, Jesus crucified, resurrected of your sins. I'm like, all right, there you go. And they'll tell you, just pray like me. Say this prayer. Oh, great, great. Works gospel. Or they'll say, you've got to ask Jesus into your heart. Here we go again. You cannot do anything that you can do to be saved. You just believe. Believe. And we're getting to that. Uh, we're going to get to um, the actual gospel here shortly. I'm going to try to add that. And every time I do a, a Bible study here online and on YouTube or whatever, I'm always going to add that. But we're going to get to that. Now, and of course it says, rightly divide the word of truth in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. What's that mean? We have to see what the, what context is speaking to when we for one instance in Matthew twenty four thirteen. Okay, so let's go back to Matthew twenty four thirteen and let's see the context. Of course, we know Jesus is talking. Of course, but what's Jesus talking about? Who's he talking to? Let's go to Matthew chapter twenty four. Here we are, one page away. Chapter twenty four, verse one. Let's see what it says. Twenty four, verse one in, in Matthew says. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for, uh, for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left there one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He, Jesus is talking about the temple in Jerusalem. And in uh, verse 3 it says, And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him uh, privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, who's asking the question? Jesus, Jesus is going to be speaking throughout 24 here as we continue. Who's asking Jesus the question in this verse to understand the context? Well, this is, this, the, excuse me, the disciples are asking Jesus what will happen. They, they're asking the question, what shall be the sign of thy coming? What shall be the sign of Jesus' return when he comes back in the future tense from me making this video? It will be Jesus' second coming. They're, they're asking Jesus, when will you come back? They're asking that. They're also asking, and what of the sign, what, what, what is the end? Uh, of what shall be the, the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? This is what they're talking about. They're not talking about losing salvation or anything. They're talking about the, what you know? When will you come back, Jesus? And what is the sign? What's going to happen at the end of the world? What is the sign of your return? And of the end of the world? What are these signs? 
That's what they're asking. They're not saying anything else. And Jesus goes on. He says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in the name of, uh, in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of, the, uh, of wars and of rumors of wars, so that ye may not troubled, for all these things must come to pass by the end, of, uh, by the end but, uh, but is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And he continues on here. Let's uh, look in verse 8. And these things are the beginning of the sorrows. Then shall they, they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be the hated of all nations for my name's sake. He's talking about ye, the Jews, will be hated for my name's sake in the tribulation. Jesus is talking about tribulation. And then shall many be offended, and shall, uh, uh, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. In uh, verse 11, it says, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and become iniquity. Uh, and, and, excuse me, and because iniquity shall bind the love of many shall wax cold. And here's 13, But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. And 14, And this gospel, the kingdom, shall be preached unto all that the world, should be preached unto all the world for the witness of unto all nations and them that shall and then shall the end come. Let me read 14 again. I got a little tongue tied. Uh, 24, 14 says, In this gospel the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew 24, 13, Endure to the end, and you will be saved. Jesus is talking about tribulation. If any, there's, if you don't know much about uh, the book of Revelation, about future um, prophecy and things like that, I'm going to make you a very, very, very short summary. And let's start right here with the gospel right now. The gospel to, for you to get saved is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You had to, to in order to be saved, you trust in what that blood did for you, that blood, that blood come out uh, of Jesus Christ it poured all over that cross Jesus made a blood sacrifice and he became the blood atonement for your sins he took your sins away if you so believe in this gospel and nothing else you believe in what this gospel did for your salvation you cannot get saved in any way in this day and age between Pentecost and the rapture you can only get saved through this gospel only through this gospel the apostle Paul goes on to say uh, in Romans 2.16, it, Apostle Paul says, It's through my gospel, Jesus will be judging you. This gospel right here, because this is what the Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul is it said many times in the New Testament that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. And this is how you get saved today. Jew or Gentile alike, if you want to get saved today, you have to get saved through 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. You have to trust in the blood, what Jesus' blood did for you. If you trust in, in Jesus, you become saved. You believe that Jesus Christ made a blood atonement for you. Now, when you become saved, the blood of Jesus washes you completely pure of sin. And in the, God, in the eyes of God, you have no sin anymore. Jesus took it away from you on, on, on the cross. Jesus also took the wrath of God in your place on the cross. And he redeemed you, repurchased you back from sin on the cross. And on the cross, he died. And after he died... He was dead and buried for three days. And on the third day, Jesus Christ rose again, resurrected. That is the gospel. And if you're not real clear on it, if you want to learn more about salvation, go to my video on this channel. It's called Service, uh, Salvation in Service. It goes way into detail about it. I, I urge you to please check out that video as well. Now, what Jesus is talking about in chapter 14, I don't want to get way off the, the whole thing of the Catholics, but uh, I need to talk about this because... People need to understand what Matthew 24 means. Matthew 24, 13 means. Now, Jesus says in 14, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Yes, Jesus was preaching the kingdom gospel. Uh, <laughs> I-N-G. Kingdom gospel. Now, that's gospel. You can't get saved by it right now. You could have got saved by that at the time but when Jesus was walking the earth and he's telling his disciples... He was apostles, disciples, same thing, to uh, go out and to preach. You had to get saved different ways. You had to get baptized, repent, and you had to uh, you had to follow. You had to, really what it was. You had to baptize, repent, and you had to um, um, believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Now that's different now. It's right here is First Corinthians chapter fifteen verses one through four, which means you trust in in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Trust that He did it for you. 
trust in all that what he did for you that's how you're saved and there's no chance of losing salvation by any means of course not the bible clearly says it however the kingdom gospel will come back in uh revelation because the kingdom gospel was abandoned uh at the time because the jews as a nation uh rejected so it would offer to us the gentiles through this gospel and in tribulation god is going to go back to dealing with the jews to save them and it's going to go back to the kingdom gospel and it shows that very clearly in revelation now, uh, that being said, that's what this all means. I could get way into more detail. If you are actually in tribulation and, and, and the rapture has happened and you're in tribulation, if you want to know how to get saved, you refuse the mark of the beast, refuse to worship the beast. You have to, uh, if you want to t accept Jesus right then, die for Jesus Christ, you have to be uh, become decapitated. You have to be killed for your belief in Jesus. Then you become a martyr. You go right to Jesus Christ when you die. Or you can, or you can do what Matthew twenty four thirteen says, and you can endure to the end. Which means, if you can hide out, you can survive and live. Mind you, if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy anything. You'll go hungry, and everything else. The, the climate's going to be horrible. Jesus is going to be throwing his wrath onto the world every time that a new seal is open, uh, on on the scroll or the book, depending on what version you use. Wraths are going to come down and hit the world. There's going to be seven of them because there's seven uh, seals. And you're going to have to deal with all this horribleness in the world. But if you do not take the mark of the beast, and you do not worship the beast, and you can hide from the Antichrist for him giving you, you know, decapitation, if you can hide from this, sure, you can endure to the end, and Jesus will come back, and you can just walk right in. You know, you can just be a part of the world, but you have to obey Jesus, because he's the boss then. And he's the one that's going to physically be here for a thousand years. It's going to be wonderful. I go, I'm going to go in way into more detail than that on the next video. But I didn't want to get too far into that. But that's that's what they're talking about. Too many religions, denominations, whether it be, uh, you know, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're all saying it's incorrect, incorrectly because they're not rightly dividing their Bible. We have to rightly divide. We have to understand what the context is they're talking about. Okay. Now we see these things here. And if we look over here to Peter. Uh, Peter is actually called three name, different names in the Bible. He's either Peter, Simon, or Cephas. If you see one of those three main names, it's probably talking about Peter, the Apostle Peter. Um, here's one thing that they called Peter the Pope. And it's not so much that, it's just that it, it, it's kind of weird because when even people that are not Catholic don't seem to know the difference. They actually call Peter, let me put it down here. When you hear Peter, you hear, hear the word Saint Peter. And you hear that. It's like, that doesn't make any sense because Peter actually isn't a saint. Saints are people that get saved. People that are saved by this gospel will actually be saints. When they die, they'll go to Jesus and, and they'll actually be saints. If you look in, the, look in the Bible, you see the word saint. It means saved person. It's actually saved. It also can mean uh, tribulation saints that get saved at the kingdom gospel during tribulation as well. Now, Peter isn't a saint. He's actually something different. Let's actually find that out because I found a. I want to talk about this verse. If we get a First Peter, and we get a chapter five, verse one. Let's see what Peter says about himself. All right, First Peter, chapter five, verse one says, "This is Peter talking. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder." and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also the partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Shall revealed. We haven't seen the glory yet. Let's read, some, let's read the beginning of that again in 5.1. The elders which are, which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder. Right here, Peter says he's an elder. Peter, elder. Peter's not a saint, he's an elder. Now, I, again, I don't want to get into Revelation too much in, in this video, but uh, it really talks a lot about that. If someone, in my opinion, if someone calls Peter St. Peter, it's kind of offensive. Because Peter is a higher rank than a saint. Because as you know, Peter is an elder. And in the Bible, again, I don't want to go too far into Revelation. I'm going to have to make a video about that. Um, in Revelation, there's, uh, what is it, 24 elders. There's 24 elders in Revelation. And the 24 elders, as we speak, are in heaven. 12 of the, 12 of the elders are the, are, are the head of the 12 tribes of Israel. And those are easy to find. 
well, what the tribes are. Of course, those are Jacob's, uh, Jacob's sons, and actually one of one of them is his grandson Manasseh, would actually be Joseph's son, which actually be uh, Jacob's grandson. Now that's the twelve. That's that's twelve uh, of the head of twelve of the beginning of the twelve tribes of Israel. There's twelve elders right there. They're in heaven. Now there's another twelve that make up twenty four, and those are the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. Of course, Paul being one now. One of the uh, apostles, yeah, one of the disciples slash apostles uh, was excluded, removed, which is Judas Iscariot, which betrayed Jesus. He actually felt bad for what he did and went out and killed himself. So sadly, Judas is in hell now. However, um, actually, Peter and, and the rest of them actually appointed another man, uh, the twelfth apostle, which he was only mentioned like once in the Bible. But God actually appointed Paul um, himself personally. So Paul makes up the twelfth apostle. So, so you have the twelve elders, uh, excuse me, the twelve, 12 tribes of Israel, the head of those, which are Jacob's sons, and one of, and actually also one of Jacob's grand, uh, yeah, one of Jacob's grandsons. That's twelve, and the other twelve is the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, excluding, removing uh, Judas Iscariot, and adding in the apostle Paul. Those twenty-four make the elders in heaven, which means if you, as we just read. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, Peter very much clearly says he is an elder. And in actually the book of Revelation also proves that as well. So Peter technically isn't a saint. A saint is a person that is saved. Like me, I'm saved. I'm, I'm a saint. Because I'll, I'll actually be a saint like in the heavenlies. And if you get saved by this gospel, you will also be a saint. However, Peter and Paul, for example, like the rest of the... Um, like the rest of the uh, apostles, of course, again, excluding Judas Iscariot, they're, they're actually not saints at all. They're elders. It's just really weird. Now, these are a few examples that I had about the Catholic religion. And according to the Bible, it doesn't match up. It does not match up according to the Bible at all. So, I'm not saying anything bad about Catholics. I'm not saying anything. I'm just letting the Bible speak. And beliefs that the Catholics have, it does not line up properly with the Bible. Things like that. So, um, what, I could, what I did was I just got what I could, because like I said, like other religions, uh, whether it be you know, Catholics and also the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons were like that as well. You, know, you get different information from different ones. I've talked to Mormon missionaries. I've talked to... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and they all seem to like like one out of, one out of every like five or so, they'll have a different they'll have a different uh, definition of something, or it'll mean something different. Or like, oh, I know, I don't mean that, I don't believe that, I believe this. And within their their own church, they have disagreements, and it's hard to kind of get the full facts because a, a Catholic could watch this right now, and be like, no, that doesn't make sense. That's not what I believe. Then another Catholic on the website or whatever says, yeah, that's right. You know, whatever they believe. So I'm trying to to do this as fairly as possible to not like. Uh, mislead or misunderstand beliefs or anything about different churches but like i said that's what the bible says about uh, the catholics beliefs and things like that there's way more i could have gone into but i wanted to always make sure that the matthew uh, tw chapter 24 verse 13 is is uh, understood correctly and please get saved uh if you're not saved please get saved you can get saved through uh first corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4 and I truly believe that after the rapture and, and tribulation starts, you cannot any longer get saved by that gospel. You have to go back to the kingdom gospel. There has to be works then. You cannot get saved by works. Uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul says, Through no works, no works are, are you saved with salvation, lest any man should boast. So nothing you can do to save yourself. Just believe. Believe. And that's it. And then you're saved. But if tribulation comes... And you're left behind, and the, and the rapture left you behind. You have to go back to the kingdom gospel. And uh, hope I make it very clear. I, I am going to do a video very soon about the end times, how to prepare for tribulation. If you did, if you did not make it to, uh, if you didn't get taken in the rapture, I'm going to talk about that because I think, I think the Lord's going to come back soon. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. I think he just think he's going to come back soon. But that's about the Catholic belief. If you are Catholic. Please read your Bible. Uh, take a look at it for yourself. The Bi I'm just reading right from the Bible. See what the Lord has to say. I'm not speaking. The Bible's speaking. I just want everybody to be educated in the scriptures. 
And I want everybody to just be safe and get saved. And God bless.